my name is Valeria Spiller, and uh, I am a PhD at uh, NTNU in Trondheim, Norway. So uh, today I would like to talk about uh, our research about uh, material extrusion and the manufacturing. First of all, for those of you that might not be familiar with the process, I will quickly break down this schematic. So material extrusion is a multi-phase process. And the first phase is the printing phase. So here, the key advantage is that uh, it's possible to use uh, an FPM printer and the filament. But the filament is a blend of metal powder and the polymeric binder. So uh, the outcome of the first phase is, uh, is called the green part, and uh, it's a composite, basically. Note that here, the maximum temperature reached during the printing is not enough to melt uh, the metal powder. So this is just sufficient to um, soften the binder and to, to shape the, the component on the printing platform. Then the, the, binder, the, the, bind the binder is removed through the binding. That can be done in several ways, depending on the type of binder. And finally, the parts are sintered. And sintering is a quite well-established well metallurgical process. So basically, the, the metal powder diffuse and uh, uh, the metal densified. So the fabrication of the specimens with this technique is still quite challenging. In our case, we use a really simple FPM printer and a filament that contains more than the 80% in weight of the 16L metal powders. So we have to start with really simple shapes, as you can see, gradually increasing the difficulty and the size of the samples to see if there were some kind of uh, size effect during the printing phase. But still, there were some defects that were really difficult to get rid of. For example, the, the bonding of the layers, poor shape retention, the warping of the bottom parts, and also some voids uh, due to the printing strategies. For example, uh, here uh, where the rasters conjoint with the, um, with the outer wall. So in the end of this process, we defined a set of printing parameters suitable for a good, good quality of the green parts. Uh, of course, there are more parameters, but these are the most, the most relevant. Note, for example, uh, the nozzle temperature, which is true 90 degrees, which is pretty high. If you think that uh, for FDM of PLA, 110, 220 is more than enough. And this is due because the filament is really weak and fragile. So uh, the temperature has to increase. So with these parameters, we printed for this campaign, these cuboids, these bricks, and we printed them both flat on the surface and standing. So for the sake of simplicity, I will call them horizontal and vertical. And this is because we wanted to extract specimen from these cuboids in different orientation. So we printed them with 0.1 millimeters of layer thickness and uh, an infill percentage of 100%, and the rast rectilinear rasters uh, with minus plus 45 degrees orientation. Then the green parts are the binded and sintered, and the final result is called the silver part. Um, when sintering is involved, usually uh, an issue that uh, has to be taken into account is the shrinkage of the parts. So we measured our silver parts, and we obtain an average of 19% dimensional reduction on the XY plane, while uh, it's a little bit higher along the Z direction. And this is due to the layer Y structure. We also measure the surface roughness, uh, which is, of course, depending on the side analyzed. And then we extracted the specimens. So we wanted some dog bones for tensile tests and single edge nose specimens for triple bending tests. And here we have three different U notches with 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and one millimeters of radius. With the leftover parts, we also perform microstructure and micro hardness analysis just to complete the frame. And uh, here it's just important to say that uh, the microstructure is coarse, which is typical of this material. And we also have uh, a lot of twinning defects. And a last observation before going to the test results, uh, for what regards to the porosity, what we observed is that, uh, for example, uh, in the horizontal specimens, there is no clear pattern for the pores. There are some pores, but randomly distributed. While 
when it comes to the vertical specimens, we have this really clear pattern of vertical stripes uh, of alignment, of course, which were really visible naked eye. And uh, uh, in my opinion, this is due to the printing strategy. So then, uh, tensile tests. Here, I would like to start with the reddish curve, the pink curve that is related to the horizontal specimens, two specimens, H1 and H2, for simplicity. And uh, in this case, the result, uh, the behavior was really, really similar. The cores are overlapping and uh, also the fracture looks similar. So I just uploaded one picture on the top. But uh, when it comes to the vertical specimens, we have two really different behavior. So V1 is really aligned to the horizontal specimens. And V2 shows a really reduced uh, elongation to break. And this is also reflected from the fracture, that is the last picture. Uh, in which you can see that in this case, the, the raster just bonded. So we have a really clear uh, segmented fracture and even less necking than uh, in the previous cases. This last result, V2, reminded us of a previous campaign that we performed on tensile tests. But in this case, the dog bone were printed singularly, so not extracted from a bulk and flat on the surface, so it's basically the same situation of the vertical specimens. And here uh, we have uh, also a reduction in the strength, but uh, we still have the uh, reduced elongation to, to break, and the fracture looks similar because we have again the 45 minus 45 uh, pattern and the alignment of course inside of the fracture surface. Then for what regards for triple mending tests, finally, this is just an overview. These are all the tests that we did, and uh, note that we mark the specimen to remember not only from where we extracted them, so horizontal or vertical cuboid, but also the notch size, and also if they were taken from the top, from the bottom, or from the middle, from the edge of the cuboids, to see if this could have some, some influence. These are the same results, but divided uh, um, for notch radius. And here, what, what we can say, um, I would say that uh, first, uh, horizontal specimens are always performing better than vertical specimens. And this is probably due first to the more favorable uh, um, orientation of the layers with respect to the loading direction, but also, I would say, to uh, the porosity inside of the specimens. And this discrepancy between the failure load of the horizontal and vertical specimens is actually decreasing with decreasing notch size. So meaning that uh, the more critical is the situation, the less is important if the, if the layers are favorably oriented. And then you can see that uh, for the larger notch, so one millimeter radius, uh, we have an increase in the failure load that is about uh, 20% with respect to the smaller notch. So uh, quite significant in my opinion. Uh, here I just wanted to show uh, with a picture on your left, how much, uh, uh, how much was the deformation of the specimens even before the fracture started. And then with the SCM picture, I wanted to show the difference between horizontal and vertical specimens. The horizontal fracture is a regular ductile fracture with a lot of um, side deformation and dimples. While for the vertical fracture, we see that uh, basically the, the fracture jumped from layer to layer and uh, it exposed the, um, the pattern, the raster pattern plus minus 45 degrees. So <clears throat> to wrap up uh, quickly, uh, um, the fabrication is still challenging for us. So this means that it's difficult to prepare more specimens and perform more tests. But we can conclude so far that uh, um, for the tensile properties, there's a great dependency if the specimen is extracted from a bulk or printed singularly. For both tensile and triple mending tests, uh, the, layer, the layer orientation with respect to the loading direction is determinant. We also saw the notch size effect in the triple mending tests. And then I forgot to mention that uh, in our case, for this data, we couldn't see a relation, uh, an influence on the triple mending tests of the position of extraction. So middle of the cuboids, edges, top, bottom. But maybe this is just related to this data. So uh, this is, of course, a work in progress. Um, we are planning to have further investigation. And uh, for example, in my opinion, it would be really interesting to have uh, also uh, theoretical models 
to predict uh, to model the structure and also <clears throat> uh, relating it to the porosity inside of the specimens. So that's it from my part. Thank you for your attention.